Hi, this is Shiva Rajaya from vitalcoaching.com. We are talking about vital sex and tantric sex and the topic for this video is how to explore your sexual shadows. Um, when it comes to, um, to sexual energy, of course there is something that is quite mysterious there. Erotic power is something that is seductive and feels a little bit dangerous and sometimes when you have this erotic energy waking up inside of you, it might feel a little bit scary, a little bit challenging to look at what's actually going on inside of you because it's an aspect of your life that you might not necessarily set up free in. So you might be controlling it, holding it back and try to lock it in with um, you know, duality and considering that this is good, this is bad. When you start tapping into that aspect of your erotic life, then you are a bad person, you're slutty, you should not go there. So what are sex shadows? You know, sex shadows are anything that has to do with exploring the limits of what feels comfortable to you. Everything that is in the shadow is things that uh, didn't still receive light. You know, right now the reason why we have shadows and lights is because our mind is creating that division and considering that something is good and something is bad. So what is bad, we lock it in, we put it in the forest there, we don't go and uh, explore it and then it becomes a shadow because we are no longer cultivating it, we are no longer activating it. Some things that are shadows today might not have been shadows like a thousand years ago. Something that is a shadow today in your life might not have been a shadow like just two or three years ago. You know, and uh, something that was a shadow maybe two, three years ago might no longer be a shadow today because it might be something that is out there, it's clarity, it's exposed, it's uh, in the sun, sunlight and you're no longer afraid or scared and uh, it's part of, of, of your life. So the idea of shadow and lights are really, um, you know, a distinction that we make internally and as a society in general, we also tend to make that distinction. There are certain sexual practices that the average being might not be too comfortable with and uh, certain practices that uh, everybody is comfortable with, at least in private. Then when it comes to exposing, uh, you know, the uh, sexual practices in, for instance, public places or things like that, of course, there is, a, there is still a shadow. It means that there is lots of shame around nakedness. There is guilt and uh, undigested emotions there that uh, don't necessarily free the sexual energy. So the whole aspect of sexual energy in society in general, it's quite taboo and it's quite a shadow by itself. It means that... Uh, people don't go to each other and go like, so how is your sex life? Uh, did you have any good orgasms this week? Um, what, uh, you know, how many sexual partners did you, did you have in the last month? Are you, are you still uh, intimate with your wife? How many times a week are you having sex? You know, this is a conversation that some people might have when they are very good friends, but you don't just go to a stranger and start having this kind of conversation. And uh, the question is, why not? What's what's wrong with this conversation and uh, what's wrong is that we have certain patterns which are shadow patterns we project some shadows and we project some guilt and shame around uh, sex and nakedness for instance so when it comes to uh, you know to the shadows and when you actually dare to go and explore that a little bit you are stretching really the limits of your erotic territory and then start taking some risks in that exploration and realizing, oh my God, there is a world of energy there that I didn't tap into. And sometimes it's going to bring lots of fresh juice into your erotic life. Suddenly you start activating a fresh flow of energy that is extremely powerful in your existence. And, um, you know, there is the myth of uh, Eros and, and Psyche in uh, Greek mythology, where my interpretation of it is like Eros, the sexual energy comes and conquers the mind and conquers the subconscious mind and starts creating fantasies. So this is the play of Eros coming into the subconscious mind area and really seducing and bringing in ideas of, uh, you know, sexual shadows or sexual energy within the space of Psyche. And so the two of them start making love and eventually that's what we call fantasies. When you have a fantasy merging, you know, you're there falling asleep and then suddenly poof, you have this image about some erotic vision coming to your mind. Where does that come from? It's because your sexual energy is waking up and then it's hitting the patterns in your mind and in your energy body. And then suddenly you start having ideas because the filter of your mind is going to respond to that sexual energy and simply create fantasies create visions of sexual scenes that turn you on 
And so when you want to explore your sexual fantasies and explore your sexual shadows, the first step is really to identify what is the territory that you're comfortable with and what is, where is your edge? What are the things that you don't feel too comfortable doing, but that with a little bit of safety, you would be happy to, uh, you know, to explore and, and try them. Um, so that's, you know, identifying your, your shadows. The second uh, step is really to create a sense of safety. And um, this means that if you engage into your shadows uh, and start exploring them, exploring your fantasies, very often it means that you want to make sure that you're not going to get a backlash out of that, that, um, that it's, it's safe to go that way, both physical and also emotionally with the, 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 your partner and your lover. You know, if you express or voice a sexual fantasy to your husband or your wife and the consequence is that they decide to divorce you because you, they think you are extremely dark and dangerous, then uh, that would not be a very um, uh, positive uh, victory into your sexual exploration. So instead, you know, check in, st start feeling into what, how to create safety around uh, voicing and expressing and uh, living these, uh, these shadows. Uh, another aspect is, of course, creating a sense of complicity with your sexual partner or sexual partners and um, so that they are on board with giving you space to, uh, to uh, express this, uh, these shadows. It means that when you are engaging into that space, very often, if you are taking the lead and wanting to explore your fantasies, then uh, that means that you will have some people who are going to be space holders. They are going to be there observing and giving you energy and supporting that, uh, that exploration. You know, what are those shadows? What are the kind of possible fantasies that you might have? You know, some of it can have to do with uh, threesomes or engaging with other people into the sexual space. You know, maybe you are with uh, your partner and you you know everything about the sexual exploration and your boundaries within that and suddenly in your mind the, the real fantasy is to bring another potential lover in that space. Um, another fantasy that you can have is the, the idea of exploring pain and uh, you know right now there is lots of exploration about kinky, uh, sex, BDSM and these kind of practices. Lots of people are going to be extremely turned on by the idea of exploring that specific uh, edge. The idea of uh, you know dominance and sexual restraint, uh, sensual or sexual dominance is a is a powerful one as well. You know the idea that that you totally lose control and allow the other person to dominate you within that space, or taking also the the dominant role. This is another shadow, another aspect of fantasy, sexual fantasy that can be uh, can exist inside of you. Another one, another shadow or sexual fantasy that you might have might be to, uh, to uh, have sex in, in public places within a public context, you know, where people don't, don't see that you are having sex, but it's a turn on because there is other energies involved. It's not just locked and, and uh, separated. That can be another, another fantasy that uh, sometimes people have. Um, being watched or watching, you know, it's also another another fantasy that that can kick in. If you have a um, if you are a couple and you have another couple with who you feel really comfortable, the idea of having sex in the same space might be a turn on for for some people. So the reason again why all these things are shadows is just because they are not uh, common. Most of the times, you know, people are not exposed to them on a on a regular basis unless you already have a, um, a more free sexual. Uh, life, but otherwise very often those things stay within the, the limits of your fantasies. And um, yeah, what happens when you explore your shadows a little bit more is that you actually expand uh, the energetic and the emotional potential that you engage with in sex. You know, if you have an aspect inside of you that you didn't explore, for instance, uh, you know, some of these fantasies, some of these desires that l are locked inside of you, and then you really feel like there is there is something that is blocked internally because you never went there. It's a little bit like having a tiger living in the forest next door and you never want to face the tiger. And then one day you go like, okay, I'm going to go and, and see what's up with this wild uh, beast that is there in, in this forest. And you go and face the tiger and befriend the tiger, befriend this uh, erotic nature that you have inside of you. And then it actually expands the understanding and the knowledge that you have about yourself. So 
if you put that exploration within the, the, the tantric sex context, within the sacred space context, it makes total sense because it's about going and diving into the shadows in this conscious exploration and knowing much more about your, um, your nature and uh, therefore becoming a more complete uh, being. Don't get me wrong, okay? I'm not saying that you must absolutely go and explore these shadows. Every person makes their own choice, but the benefits of going there uh, sometimes and diving into this uh, shadow exploration has the potential of expanding your sexual or tantric potential immensely because uh, if there is something, an aspect of yourself that you are really afraid of, then it's going to lock you in fear. Whereas if you go and face those fears and go and face what's out there, then eventually you go like, oh, I can relax. I've been around the planet 20 times and I know what's going on on this planet. So that gives you a sense of trust that you can start engaging then into all aspects of your life rather than being locked in a state of fear and um, yeah and mistrust hope this makes sense to you i'll see you soon